Hey everybody, we've got our good friends Ari and Zoro back, and we're continuing with our discussion of CCH, specifically talking about some tax research problems dealing with CCH. Now remember, with tax research databases, just like dogs are man's best friend, tax research databases are a tax researcher's best friend. So let's go ahead, let's jump into these problems to learn more about CCH. CCH Commercial Tax Research Service Discussion Problems. So I have eight discussion problems that focus on CCH and commercial tax research databases. It's really important that you watch the introduction to CCH video I have as well as other databases including Checkpoint because these questions are meant to be in addition to those introduction videos. Okay, let's go ahead and start with the first question. And again, you're going to see some similarity between these questions and the questions I focused on for Checkpoint. So question one, what is the function of a commercial tax service? So we had this exact same question in the checkpoint discussion problems and I'm going to focus on the same things because it's very, very important you understand what the benefits of having a using commercial tax service are. So remember the biggest burden of or the biggest trade off of a commercial tax service, these cost money. They're not free, right? There's free tax services and commercial tax services that cost money. The drawback of the commercial tax services, they cost money, but the benefits I would say the benefits, they outweigh the burdens of money. I mean, there's obviously flexibility allowed as we talked about in the introduction to Checkpoint, introduction to CCH tax research service videos. But so if you, if you are constrained by money, you can, you can determine the flexibility of what services you want within those databases, what types of items. But the benefits themselves, they really do allow a tax professional to do what is needed of him or her. So there's really three elements I think that they help, three overarching elements that they help with in terms of these commercial tax services. First thing is they make tax research efficient. They make it efficient and efficiency is very important because when it comes to tight deadlines and budgets, very, very important that a, a tax, a tax, a professional, uh, a tax professional is able to complete what he or she needs to do in the time in the time to make a uh, turn a profit. Next, t these commercial tax services they allow for effective research, and they're even more so effective, in my opinion, than the free tax services. And the reason why is because, as we know, the tax law changes so rapidly and so frequently that these commercial tax services they do a great job updating the materials daily. Versus free tax services, not so much the case. It might be months before they get updated. And finally, they provide for a comprehensive. These tax research services they provide a comprehensive comprehensive way to do tax research. And as I focused in the introduction videos, you see that they, they link, they, they organize materials together so that when you're doing research, it, they, they link and they provide other avenues that you might not have resorted to or found using the free sources. So all three of those elements together, efficiency, effectiveness, and comprehensive nature make tax research. They make it extremely easy to do and and more uh, manageable in terms of what's required in practice. Okay, question two. Why would a practitioner need a tax service when most primary tax sources are available free on the internet? So we talked a lot about that in question one, and I know this question comes from Checkpoint as well, the Checkpoint questions we already did. But again, it's really important to stress this. So going back to the efficiency, the effectiveness, and comprehensive, I focused on a few things. So while practitioners can retrieve most primary tax sources at no cost, this free access does not translate into more effective research. So the three elements, these three elements, they come back to answer in this question as well. So if anyone ever asks you about the trade-offs all with respect to commercial tax services over free services, it's always about efficiency, looking at the budget, right? Effectiveness, making sure you cover all areas and comprehensive, putting together areas that you might not have been able to put together without these tax services. It, it's, it's putting together all three elements. Okay. So they, they do, they are needed really in to do a, to do a proper tax research. This is because uh, there's just so much information out there and it takes into account uh, that, you know, you have time to sort, read, comprehend, which goes to the efficiency, um, which can lead to information overload and, and efficiency. All this information must be managed. And again, the organization helps with that. Otherwise the internet, uh, using the internet for tax research is not effective. 
Consequently, internet access to primary sources cannot substitute for subscription to a comprehensive tax service. So again, efficiency, effectiveness, and comprehensiveness, that's why these pay commercial tax services, they're worth the money. Okay, question three, and this is a very important question. Now we're starting to get into the specifics of CCH. List the four major editorial services provided by CCH Tax Research and discuss the differences between them. Okay, so I'm going to use different colors. And the first one that we're going to talk about, and these are specific to CCH, I will also note their equivalency in Checkpoint as well, because again, I referenced that you should watch that video um, in addition to this one. So the first one, the first of these sources, of these editorial services or sources, is the tax research consultant, the tax research consultant. And this is the equivalent in checkpoint of the federal tax coordinator of the federal tax coordinator. So I'll put the in parent, I'll put the um, in parentheses what the equivalent is in checkpoint. So this is equivalent to the FTC, the federal tax coordinator in checkpoint. And what this is, this analyzes the internal revenue code and all important federal tax legislation, regulations, cases, rulings, primary authorities out there, and it is the most comprehensive by far. So the federal tax coordinator is the equivalent. And this is this is a, um, a topical, it's, it's a subject matter, so it's by topic. So I'll put in front of it topic. So it's a topical approach, and that is the most comprehensive. It's the equivalent of the federal tax coordinator in Checkpoint. And in CCH, it's called the Tax Research Consultant. Okay, the second one. Let's change the color. I'm going to use red now. So the second major editorial service of the four is called the U.S. Master Tax Guide. The U.S. Master Tax Guide, which in Checkpoint is the Federal Tax Handbook, the equivalent of the Federal Tax Handbook. And this one is similar to the tax research consultant, but it's not as comprehensive. It's an accurate and easy to use reference for day-to-day -day questions on the most current years. Again, this one is, is a topic, is a topic approach, topical, not annotative. And the first two, the tax research consultant, and the U.S. master tax guide, these are the flagships. These are the flagship. I'll just go ahead and write that down now. These are the flagship editorial services provided by CCH. Okay. So let me, I'll put a line to separate those. Those two are the flagship services, meaning those are the, what they, their pride of, of their editorial services. Okay. The next one, let me change the color to blue. So the next one is number three, blue. This one is the citator and the citator is also in checkpoint known as the citator as well. So they're both called the same thing. So CCH citator, the checkpoint citator. Now they are different, but they do the same things. So the citator notes specific relationships between certain authorities like cases, such as if a case has been overruled by another case. It also tracks an, indivi uh, an issue individually, allowing the practitioner to follow the key issues of the case. The citator is completely integrated within CCH to allow you to cite check all cases or other authorities I'll mention in a moment quickly and to see all authority for a given case in one place. And I keep mentioning cases, but it's not just cases. It also, um, it goes beyond that. It deals with revenue rulings, rev procs, regulations, um, most area, most primary, uh, sources of the tax law that could be considered binding. Okay. And as I talk about in the introduction to CCH video, the citator that's in, in checkpoint, I'm sorry, in CCH, it, it's, it's very similar to Checkpoint, but it is different. The main thing is the, the terminology. While we still have cited case and citing case and the citation, that we have differences when it comes to um, case distinguished, cited favorably, you know, those, those, those phrases, and it's important to understand that. Okay, the last of the four with respect to CCH editorial, major editorial, is the standard federal tax reporter. The standard federal tax reporter and the equivalent in checkpoint is the United States tax reporter, the USTC. I'm sorry, USTR, my apologies. I think a US tax code. USTR, United States tax reporter in checkpoint. Now these are annotative. So the first two are topical. 
The last one, the standard federal tax reporter is annotative. And the citator is not really a topical or annotative. It's just a citator. It's just a function. So the standard federal tax reporter, which is similar to the United States tax reporter, which is the equivalent in, in Checkpoint, is a comprehensive and up-to-date source of federal tax law, regulations, committee reports, cases, rulings, explanations, and federal forms. Again, it's an annotated approach. So there's annotations organized by both code sections and legal issues, and they cite the American federal tax report. I'm sorry, they cite specific, um, not the American federal tax report. They cite just various uh, reporters out there with respect to um, the cases, to respect the cases. The USTR cites the uh, American federal tax reports, just so you know. Okay, so those are the four major editorial sources or services that by CCH. Make sure you know all four. Make sure you know if they're topical or if they're annotative. Make sure you know the equivalent in um, Checkpoint and what they do. Let's go to question four. So question four, which tool in CCH tax research might help a researcher confirm the current status of a case or ruling? Well, this one is going to be the citator. We talked about it above, number three, the citator, and it's the same answer in Checkpoint. It's the citator there as well. Again, they are different because they're two different services, but they do the same thing. So um, let's just talk about why the citator is so important. The citator is so important because tax law, it changes daily due to new legislation and other changes in the law, as we know. So we've got administrative pronouncements, cases, regulations, these, these things, since it's always, they're always constantly evolving and changing, researchers must determine if subsequent events have affected the legal standing of sources upon which the tax solution re, um, relies. So CCH has a citator and the citator assists researchers in examining any updates or changes and whether it has any effect with respect to a specific area of law. So again, CCH, this citator is a tool if, for which researchers can learn the history of a legal source of primary authority and evaluate the strength of its holdings. And again, the CCH citator is very similar to Checkpoint. I go through these in both videos. Why is it used? As, as we talked about, because again, um, the changes in law, they happen frequently in tax. So it's pretty much to the level of malpractice if you're not looking at a citator. Okay, question five. Distinguish between the following terms, cited case, citing case, citation, and cites. And we can do this using, again, the Kellers. So we'll talk about this. We'll start with black for uh, cited case. So the cited case is the case that if you're looking at a citator, for example, that's the case at issue. That's the case at issue. So the example I like to use, and I use this in the video, we have the Supreme Court um, Glenshaw Glass decision, Commissioner versus Glenshaw Glass. I don't have the exact citation in front of me, but it was the Supreme Court. And I talk about this in a lot of the tax research videos, the Glenshaw Glass Supreme Court case. So the cited case is Glenshaw Glass. The citing case, which I'm going to put in red, so we're going to change that to citing case. Citing case is the uh, case later that refers to the cited case, to the cited case. So a future case would refer to Glenshaw Glass and, deter and, and the use of Glenshaw Glass is the um, definition of, of what is gross income in that three-part test. So the citing case, citing case is the later case where they're dealing with, hey, what is gross income? And they cite to Glenshaw Glass for that proposition for those rules. So that's the citing case. So the citation, the citation, which I'll put in blue, that is the proper uh, form that the case, Glenshaw Glass here, takes in the opinion of the citing case. So the citing case, so the form of the cited case referenced in the citing case. So it's referenced in the citing case opinion. And as we know in tax law, in many of my videos, I stress that the, the proper citation is very, very important that you do. And then finally the cites or that form cites, it's just saying that the citing case is, it cites the citing case. So cites just refers to the verb of the action or hey, the citing case is referring to the cited case, to the cited case. So the later case is going to ref, uh, refer to the older case, the Glenshaw Glass decision for that idea of precedent. And that's really everything with respect to those, those phrases. Now, those, those phrases are the same um, in the checkpoint 
discussion, just that, that terminology, but just keep in mind that the other terminology with respect to, to these things, it, it, can, it does change with respect to the CCH citator versus the checkpoint citator. Okay, question six. Describe the four common search methods used in CCH tax research. So the most common method is the keyword search. And the reason why it's so common is because just looking at the internet and how people find, go about navigating the internet, keyword searches are just so common. The second one is the index search. And this one I would say is probably the second most in common. An index search, you basically have a, a group of, of, of topics and subject matter broken down alphabetically like an encyclopedia where a uh, tax professional can look at the topics and, and find all the areas that apply. The third is a content search, which is the most uncommon and it's the least to be used by a new professional because a content search, what you're doing is you're actually drilling into a specific uh, primary or secondary source and looking at the content through a table of content structure. So I talk about this more in my in the videos where I go through Checkpoint and CCH and I navigate Checkpoint, for example, and I show you how it could be useful. If, for example, if you know a specific air, uh, issue is a partnership income tax issue, you could go right to the 700s of the uh, code sections and just walk through and read every single one of the seven code sections of 700s, which, which there's not that many because from 701 to 799, not all code section numbers are taken. So there's not actually that as many, you know, there's not 99 code sections. And finally, the fourth one is a citation search, which can be uh, very helpful if you do know that something is 100% relevant because you can back your way to get to other sources. Question seven, compare and contrast the general organization of an annotated tax database with that of a topical tax database. So this question was the same from, from Checkpoint, uh, the Checkpoint tax research uh, questions, discussion problems, and I'm going to focus on that again. So annotated, annotated tax services, which you can find these in, in all different types of tax research databases, they're organized by internal revenue code sections. So they literally go, they're organized by so code section one, two, three, four, you know, going in order, going down, down the order, down the line. So they're organized by internal revenue code section number. They're called compilations as they compile an editor's explanations and evaluation. Uh, they provide annotations, for example, brief summaries of related court cases and administrative rulings. However, topical tax services are broken down by subject matter. So example, when we talk about index searches, with respect to the four common searches, you go to an index and an encyclopedia type approach alphabetically by topic, medical, uh, automotive, you know, and it gives you all the respective areas in the, in the tax law where you might find that. So if you go to medical, you're going to find maybe some um, credits with respect to um, medical issues potentially, or maybe health savings account code sections, or you're going to find forced medical expense deductions. You'll find things like that that deal specifically with an area. So subject matter, they're broken down by subject matter. So that's really the key. Also, if topical, they, the materials follow logical threads connecting non-contiguous code sections. So again, you might have a medical and you might have section uh, a code section in the, in the 40s that deals with a credit and you have section 213. So it goes from the 40s to 213 versus annotated literally is code section one, two, three, and so on down the line in that order. Okay, finally, question eight, our last question. Explain the advanced search functions within CCH tax research. So we had a similar question like this with the checkpoint questions, but not identical because in checkpoint, we've got the intuitive search and the terms and connectors. In CCH tax research, really the type of search is a terms and connectors, a Boolean logic uh, proximity connectors approach. So terms and connectors is the main way. However, advanced search, as we see in the CCH video, it can be helpful because while it's somewhat limited, there is an area that deals with synonyms to help you, as well as it gives you some uh, ways to limit your searches with date ranges and types of authority. Um, you, can, you can really narrow down your search. Now, Checkpoint also has this. The way you do it is after you search, you can, you can break down your results even further. But with CCH, it's in the original it's in the original function. So I would say that checkpoint is probably stronger when it comes to the search ability with that intuitive search versus the terms and connectors. Although terms and connectors in practice, I would say a lot of times is significantly helpful because the way that uh, searching the law of, with millions of words and, and core opinions and, and code sections and regulations and secondary sources, it helps tremendously. All right. So that's really everything with respect to these questions.
Make sure you go back over these things. Um, they're very, very important, very helpful in terms of understanding CCH, in terms of understanding these tax research databases. Again, there's some similarity with the checkpoint items. And I want you to do well. I want you to know this stuff.